Hello, everyone. I want to touch a third rail topic. I, I first intended to mention this back when Candace Owens got demonetized for having that interview with Kanye, where they expressed conspiracy theories about the Jewish people. But now that I've seen the conspiracy wackos going full bore out in droves about the recent hurricane hitting North Carolina, I think this has to be addressed. Conspiracies used to be something that I thought were at least perhaps entertaining. I especially love the way Robert Ludlum, the guy who wrote the Jason Bourne trilogy, which Hollywood then ignored to make a completely different movie that just stole the titles and characters and then left the story in the dust. Uh, I, I'm not jaded by that at all, but uh, seriously, you owe it to yourself to read the actual books. Well, although now that I think about it, perhaps you're too young to really understand them. I mean, the Bourne supremacy takes place in Hong Kong back when it was still under British rule. And that is somewhat integral to the plot. Not integral to my video, however, is uh, continuing that topic. So let's move on. Uh, anyway, conspiracies are somewhat relevant to me because I grew up in a place that, well, it's not really the middle of nowhere, but you could see it from there. Uh, it was a very small town. And my dad was pastor of one of the community churches in that area. One member in particular was an ardent conspiracy theorist, but he was not the only one that I ran into. There were tons of them in this particular town, um, but this specific church member was heads and tails above the rest. He was not just a conspiracy theorist, but an actual member of a local militia. This particular militia wasn't as bad as several of those who have made the news, like, you know, in the standoff with the, or back in Nevada with the Bundy Ranch, I believe. Uh, so it's not like that, but they came up with, shall we say, interesting theories of their own, nonetheless. Uh, my dad relayed one of the stories, which I'll probably butcher it a bit in the details, since this was you know, like 30 years ago, and I heard it secondhand. But essentially, it went like this. Said church member came up to him after the service one day and said uh, his militia had gotten an idea that they could use explosives to blow shut the canyon that led towards this particular small town when the government was coming after them. And my dad just kind of looked at him, and, and since this was only a few years after the Gulf War had ended, he said, uh, do you remember watching on CNN the videos of the Target warehouse with the windows getting bigger and bigger in the screen until the missile just goes right through that window and it hits exactly where it was aimed? And the church member kind of says, yeah, I, I, remember, I remember seeing some of that. And then my dad further elaborates, have you ever heard of a helicopter? <laughs> They don't need to go through the canyon if they want to get you. They have their own means. And the, this church member kind of molded over and said, oh, I guess our militia is going to need to do some more thinking on that. Now, it's easy to mock this one example, but the reality is I was exposed to this piss poor thinking for years from these conspiracy theorists. And it was during the formative time of my cognitive development. So it left me nonplussed. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was also reading textbooks on logic just for fun and having a blast doing geometry and things like that. So it was very easy for me to differentiate between the two camps when I wanted to see which one was based on sound principles and which one was ludicrously moronic, which I obviously am referring to that Euclid guy. All sarcasm aside, it got to the point that I remember when the Oklahoma City bombing happened, the school librarian had put on CNN in the library to cover this. And I remember the newscasters musing that maybe this was a um, Islamic attack, similar to the first truck bomb that had been used at the bottom of the World Trade Center back in 1993. And I remember when I heard the newscaster say that, I, I turned towards one of my friends and said, I bet you some militia member did it. And this wasn't so much a prediction as it was just me being sick and annoyed of the militia people and all the conspiracies that they were bantering about. And so, sadly, it didn't really feel all that triumphant when it turned out to be correct and Timothy McVeigh was arrested. Although, as a, as a funny side note, a few years later, a family member, not a not very close, thankfully, uh, he, he'd been under the sway of conspiracy theorists as well. And I remember telling him, I think the Oklahoma City bombing was a conspiracy. And I watched his face light up. And he said, really? And I was like, yeah, I think uh, Timothy McVeigh conspired to do it. And then he did it. I almost got punched for my effort, but yeah, I think it was worth it. Anyway, here's the thing. I will freely admit that I have a bias against conspiracy theories right off the bat. Given all that I've been through, I think that there's no reason I shouldn't have that bias. In fact, 
I think everyone should have that bias against conspiracy theories because they are inherently irrational. And this stuff going on with the hurricane only helps reinforce my views today. I see the bullshit, and there is no other word to describe it, being strewn all over social media. And it's actually costing lives in the face of an emergency. I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that, nor am I referring to people such as the woman who I just saw with my own eyes, literally ranting to the point of her face being beat red, talking about how much she hates FEMA and the current administration, basing all of her vitriol at the end of her rant by going, that's what I heard General Flynn say. Now, again, she was literally red-faced as she's having her meltdown in public without any concern at all. And, and, and because I was in a medical building at the time, the nurses were coming over concerned, thinking that her blood pressure was going to be way too high. Uh, again, uh, here's the thing. What was she mad about? It was the unsubstantiated rumor-mongering plastered all over the talk radio shows that she's listening to every day, which found the roots in disinformation, such as this AI-generated image. You may have seen it. It's this girl and her puppy soaking wet in a boat. Yeah, the only problem is it was AI-generated. It never happened. Yet Glenn Beck, of all people, is reposting it, saying it's going to have some effect if you vote for Biden-Harris. This is what passes as conservative thought these days. Obvious AI-generated false images being presented as if they're real. But no, this is not what I mean when I say this is going to cost lives. And in fact, it already has cost lives in North Carolina. I mean that the people who are buying the claims that there's a FEMA conspiracy, that they're confiscating people's food and they're not allowing anybody to save anybody else, that... This is causing well-meaning individuals who believe that nonsense to counteract the effects of the National Guard who is trying to help people. They go to the same rural places out in North Carolina, only to discover that because this guy thought that they were part of this conspiracy, they never told them that they already delivered food because of the conspiracy theories that are out there. Now look, perhaps it's because for the past two and a half years I've been seeped in reading up all this Russian propaganda due to their attack on Ukraine, but... Be that as it may, having seen so much of this propaganda, I can tell the point of propaganda is not what most people think it is. See, look at the invasion of Crimea as a simple example. If you look at the Russian propaganda surrounding that, you will definitely see some of what you would expect. Claims that Russia didn't invade Crimea, that was just local dissidents who rose up against the government of Ukraine because they were being persecuted. But Russian propaganda will also push out other stories that of course Russia invaded of course Russia invaded Crimea because Russia has to protect their native speakers. And you'll see the same propaganda channels post both videos without even a care that they contradict each other. Uh, the, the same channel will air a video about how Ukrainians are really all friends, in fact brothers of Russians, wanting to be protected by Russia, and simultaneously they'll report that everyone in Ukraine is a subhuman who hates all Russians. They have no problem saying that Ukrainians are Nazis and Jews. In other words, the propaganda is intentionally self-contradictory. And as such, such propaganda will even sometimes print the truth. This gets to the heart of propaganda, because the point isn't to deny, deny, deny. If all of that propaganda did was say this isn't true, then you could tell what is true by simply doing the opposite of what it says. To paraphrase Solzhenitsyn, uh, I believe it was him anyway. It's, they lie, we know they lie, they know we know they lie, and yet they still lie. There is a sense where they will do that, but they also will then conclude, if you can tell what is true by simply doing the opposite, then we will tell you what is true so that you will believe the opposite. That is how they are looking to deceive you in that context. And this is why you can look at Russian propaganda, and you'll see that it's not just the most outrageous lie possible. They will often also report the truth, even in the midst of the hardened Russian environment that we're in today. What is the goal of presenting both? The end goal is that when the population is being subverted by propaganda and it sees so many conflicting stories, the average person simply will not know which one is true. You can't reliably believe what is said on any of the stations, nor can you reliably believe the opposite of what is said on all of these stations. So you have no way to tell which is true and which is not. The consequence of that is that at best, you will simply give up. You'll just simply pick a talking head that you like and follow what they say no matter what. 
Th does that sound familiar? I mean, this is exactly what we're seeing being presented from social media today. People don't know what to believe anymore, so they pick somebody and they just blindly follow that person and repeat everything that they say. And what we're seeing is the end result of propaganda, which means that we should look for where this propaganda originated. Because if you want a conspiracy theory, whoever is pushing the stories that cause this mistrust, doubt, contradictions in thinking and all of that, that's not your friend who's doing that. So does this mean that I'm saying Russia did it? Uh, no. In, in fact, Ryan Macbeth has analyzed social media and has found that, at least in regards to the hurricane, this is homegrown. Here's what he says. Let's start by using Cyber social media threat detection software to determine whether our foreign adversaries are spreading this misinformation about Hurricane Helene or whether we're doing it to ourselves. So I actually set up a profile in Cyber to look at a number of keywords that have been frequently used regarding the hurricane and the federal response. And what I discovered shocked me. Uh, we have very few foreign actors spreading disinformation. We're doing this to ourselves. This is homegrown. What we don't realize is that this has been going on for years and we are simply now seeing the results bearing fruit. Uh, and consider what KGB defector Yuri Bezmenov said here. Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. Only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process, which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, active мероприятия in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. You cannot change their mind even if you, if you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information, the facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures. So what is the upshot of all this? Well, it means that we need to be all the more diligent at verifying our sources. And, and when you start listening to somebody and they are profoundly wrong in an area where you have intimate knowledge, don't trust them when they make claims that you can't verify yourself. yourself. Uh, yes, this does mean you might end up having to do a little work on your end. You'll have to think. You'll have to apply reason. And this is especially so when it's on a topic where you have strong feelings or where it seems to hit every single one of your biases and you really want it to be true. This is the real world. What you really, really, really want to be true almost never is. Have doubt about it. Substantiate, verify, validate, and then promote it. In other words, before you just continue to spout off your conspiracy theories, treat every claim of a conspiracy as if the claim itself is its own conspiracy. You don't just spout it off as if it's true without checking. Assume you're being lied to. If you really want to be a conspiracy theorist, assume that the conspiracy is a lie to trick you. In the universe where your enemies are trying to make truth impossible, it's all the more important to be able to understand how you can find the truth and how you can hold on to it, and that is by making sure that what you are presenting to other people has a grounding in it. So those are some tips for you, and with all of that, I do hope you have a wonderful day. Uh, also, there are four lights. If you know, you know.